and water, as everyone knows, do not mix. In the ocean, though, it can be a lethal combination for wildlife. Oil spills from tankers, pipelines, or an offshore platform can affect the marine environment for years to come. Doug Inkley is senior scientist with the National Wildlife Federation. Right now we have the immediate short-term impacts and possible implications for wildlife and habitats being directly coated by oil. But the longer-term impacts are the toxic effects and the residual effects that could last for years. In the wreck of the Exxon Valdez up in Prince William Sound in Alaska is now 20 years later and we still have some species that are not recovering or have not completely recovered to pre-wreck conditions. Until the Valdez spilled more than 260,000 barrels of oil, the United States' worst oil disaster had been off California's Santa Barbara coast in 1969. It coated the water and shore with nearly 4,800 barrels of oil that eventually spread across 1,300 kilometers, killing thousands of marine birds, mammals, and fish. We have to be concerned about any of the birds that tend to land on the water. Uh, we have to be concerned about the entire marine ecosystem because this oil is toxic to the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, that are the very base of the food chain that all the animals further up the food chain are dependent upon. The 1969 California oil spill is credited with having sparked the modern environmental movement. But injury to marine wildlife is just one part of the story. Oil spills can have devastating effects on a region's economy. Blighted beaches won't attract tourists, and the fishing industry in the vicinity of an oil spill can be nearly wiped out. In Louisiana, areas where fishermen would normally trawl for shrimp and trap crabs were shut down as the oil slick threatened to contaminate the fishing waters. It is an ecological disaster. It's going to change the livelihood of people uh, probably forever. And what we need to do is recognize that we're all in this together. And to the extent that we're using oil and gas ourselves, we're probably contributing to the problem. Doug Inkley says the U.S. needs to convert to renewable fuels because accidents and oil spills will continue to happen. Sarah Banasak, a senior economist with the American Petroleum Institute, agrees with the need for renewables. But for now, she says oil remains the single largest source of energy worldwide. Right now, today in this country, less than 1% of our energy is coming from uh, wind and solar. So less than 1%. It's growing very rapidly, but it's growing from a, a very small base. 60% of our energy is coming from oil and natural gas. That's down from, you know, 25 years ago, maybe 70-something percent was coming from oil and natural gas. And it's forecast to continue declining down to 50-something in the future. Sarah Banasak also says an accident like that in the Gulf is extremely rare. We haven't had an event of this sort of size or magnitude in about 40 years. Um, and we've been in the operating offshore in the Gulf of Mexico since the 1940s. Elsewhere in the world, however, there have been more accidents. Last year in Australia, an oil well owned by a Thai company leaked for 10 weeks into the Timor Sea before being plugged. The problem is, says Doug Inkley, these spills don't clean up easily. The idea that we can effectively clean up an oil spill is, is really a myth. It's a fabrication. When you look at the size of this oil spill, and you look at the size of the Exxon Valdez oil spill, only some 14% of the oil was ever recovered from that spill. It remains to be seen exactly how this latest oil disaster will affect U.S. energy policy, keeping in mind that the oil and gas industry also provides hundreds of thousands of jobs. Rebecca Ward, VOA News, Washington.